Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I wanted to do a get ready with me, either using products I haven't quite fully formed an opinion on yet, I'm still kind of figuring out how I feel about them, or ones that it's been so long I kind of don't remember my thoughts on them, or ones that are feeling a little neglected. You know, have you ever reached through your pile and go, oh, I haven't used you in a while? <laughs> All right, uh, before we get started, again, thank you for watching. If you aren't subscribed, would you please? And um, I thought I would mention it. You can also, if you're interested, follow me on Instagram. I'll make sure and leave that link down below for you. All right, so the one, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say goodbye to these two guys. This was my, I don't know if you'll believe me when I say it was a red beauty blender. It's kind of like a pale orange. It has a lot of... Um, little gouges in it from wringing it out. My fingernails kind of tear it and it's, I've washed it and I've had it for so, so, so long. It's definitely time to let it go. And this little guy here, I've not been able to find these anymore. It made me sad. This is the Blue L'Oreal Under Eye Sponge. They both are to the point when they're wet and they're being used, they're really quite fragile. So I'm gonna definitely put them in the trash. Goodbye. And I thought we'd try something new today. So. These aren't new, new, but I've never used them. And they are from Flower Beauty. I already have them dampened. This is the original Flower Beauty sponge. It does have a slight little flat area here. It almost completely doubled in size. It's like a little marshmallow puff. And this one here is a more precision one. It has a more deep angle here and a slightly less one here, but a nice really tiny little point at the end. It's so much bigger than what it was in the package, but I'm really curious to see how these work today. So we'll be using those. Um, Oh, primer. I was like, where's my primer? I'm looking for a bottle. I haven't used this in probably a good month and a half. And every time it's been a while since I've used it, I always think, is it really that good? Is it really worth the, was it $52? We'll see. One thing that I want to put down first is something here from It Cosmetics. This is their Bye Bye Redness. Um, I've used about, I don't know, maybe half the jar. And does it say what it is? It doesn't say what it is on the bottom. But this is something that uh, you can definitely put down first to help cancel out some of the redness. And I've got a couple of blemishes here that we're gonna see if we can kind of cancel out. And then other places where I have redness, this is really, wow. I don't feel like it's doing a really good job with the sponge, so I'm gonna pick a little bit up on a brush and see if that helps. I'm going to use this little tiny guy here underneath the eye. I thought I was going to get away without putting on some foundation today. And it, I don't like the coverage that I'm getting from this product from IT. So I'm going to throw on a little bit of the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Illumination. I'm not going to use even a full pump, just a little bit. So here's something interesting. I'm not sure if my coverage concerns today come from the fact that this sponge is picking up more of the product. I keep trying to bounce it around this nose area and I find that instead of pressing it in, it, it's almost like it's picking up. So if you're looking for a sponge that's gonna pick up excess product, and sometimes that's what I want my beauty blender to do, um, this will definitely do it for you, but I don't know that it's my favorite for laying it down. And maybe I just need to put a little bit more on product and see how it blends. We'll see. I'm not even gonna try anymore. I, I don't feel like I have a really good base going on and I don't know whether it's using the blending tools or whether it's this product here. Because I feel like I know how this works for me and I like the coverage that I get from this. I also remember recently enough that this worked really well and blended in beautifully. So I don't know whether it's a tools issue or it being laid down over the top of this. I kind of think it's time to just say goodbye to that. We're straight in the trash. Um, and, it, and it's not that it's not a good product, but I think mine is past its, it doesn't smell bad, but it's so much thicker than I remember it being. And maybe it was always thick and I always just dealt with it differently. I don't know, but I'm gonna throw on some powder. So I, I've had this, um, I bought this a while ago and um, it used to be my absolute favorite loose setting powder. This is the perfect setting powder from Cover FX. Um, I haven't been in this one yet. Uh, I forgot how 
great it was. So I'm just going to use a really small little fluffy brush for right underneath the eyes and then I'll use something larger for the rest of my face. And as always, I'm just going to make sure there are no concealer in the creases. It's been a while since I've reached for this. This is the old packaging of the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This is the lightest one shade that Too Faced makes. And I think it's really pretty. It's not quite as fair as the Hoola Light from Benefit, which I do have and I do like. Uh, but I thought I'd put a little bit of this on right now and see what our thoughts are. It was sometime last summer when I was doing a, a blush declutter that I got rid of my original NARS Orgasm blush. Uh, it was old, it had been around for way too long, but I got this little mini and I haven't used it yet. And I wanted to remember, is did I keep it because it was good? Is it similar to anything else that I have? Or is it really as unique as, you know, I know there's a ton of dupes for it, but the original, is it really that great? So let's put some on and see what we think. So I wanted to put on a highlight that I hadn't reached for in a while. This one here from Natasha Denona, this is the Glow. This is not the, uh, is it Super Glow or Ultra Glow? It's not like the updated version that she did last year. This one I think came out a little more than a year ago and this is in the shade 01. It's the lightest shade there is. And this one, I remember wanting it to be a little bit more highlighter-y, a little bit more shimmery, like really catch the eye. And I think that's what the Super Glow is. But this one, the, I reach for this one, or I used to, on days that I wanted a really natural, subtle glow. After I changed what my expectation was. At first, when I bought it, I was like, ooh, I want a really glowy glow. And I thought of all the beautiful Natasha Denona um, shadows that I had that the metallics were just like, and I was expecting that, but in highlighter form. And it's, it's a different formula. And once I got past my expectations, I was able to just, okay. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to give myself an all over spray of setting spray. If I do it later with uh, mascara on, <laughs> my mascara just like gets everywhere. So I'm gonna use the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. I haven't used this in forever. And it used to be like my absolute favorite. I still really like it. I like how fine the spray is and I don't really feel like I have um, large water droplets on my face and that's super important to me. For my eyes today, I wanted to use the Desi and Katie Dose of Colors Friendcation Palette. I've swatched it. Um, I think I've played with some of the mattes in here once, <laughs> but I haven't really, really dug into it deep. So I wanted to try it today and it's, these colors here just were the ones that are like beckoning me. Come, play, have fun. So we're gonna do a look with this today. I'm gonna curl my lashes, throw on some liner and mascara, and I'll be right back. For lipstick today, I'm gonna to use one of my favorite products. It's the Chubby Pencil from Clinique. And I, I love this one because it was a collaboration they did with Crayola, I don't know, a couple years ago. And I grew up loving Crayola crayons. I always used to have a big box that flipped open like this. And I still have a box of crayons, but the really big one, it's so big, it almost comes like in a bucket with a handle. It's got like almost 200 crayons on it. Um, but this is just nostalgia and perfection. And I have loved the Chubby Pencil since they came out more than a decade ago from Clinique. This one here is in the shade, it's their Chubby Intense, and this is the shade Fuzzy Wuzzy. And I know they don't make these shades anymore. I'm going to add a little bit in of Wild Strawberry. These are the colors that I use today. Um, and it looks like there's a gap. <laughs> there's not. It's just the lightest matte shade. And it's very close to my skin tone. 
So I basically used these six shadows here for this look. It was so, so, so easy. And I would say with the more foiled shades, I just found it easiest and fastest just to put it on my finger and kind of tap it on or go over my lid like this. They blend well that way and they just go on lickety splickety and I thought it was fantastic. I'm gonna be reaching for this again, but I definitely wanna use more of those cooler tones that are on the other end of the palette. All right, another thing that really surprised me is the highlight I'm wearing today from Natasha Denona. This is the Glow in the Shade 01. I really don't remember it being this glowy. I even actually buffed over it a little bit with some setting powder because it was like, it's a little too much. <laughs> um, I remember it kind of being um, a little more subdued, a little more lit from within, a little bit more glow that way and not quite so. But I mean, you can definitely see it and I think it's a really, really pretty shade. I'm excited that I kind of rediscovered this because it's been sitting there. I was really quite interested to try this again. I remember absolutely adoring this Milk Chocolate Soleil. Here's what's interesting is I put this, this is Hula Light from Benefit in my project pan for the year. And if you look at them, this is the lightest bronzer that Too Faced offers, but do you see how much warmer it is? I kind of feel like this is really meeting my needs and it's getting me to that warm bronzy place without being too orange. And I like that so much better than this. I think it might be time to let somebody else love this for me. I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed this. It's like the little teeny tiny baby NARS orgasm blush. And it's, it's really pretty. It's, I, I remember it being not quite so pink and, and maybe, maybe it's just my memory. And I was like, you know, I haven't tried it since today was the first time I dipped into it. And I really, I really like it. I feel like it's just enough and not too much. And I remember now what the hype was about NARS Orgasm. There are other blushes that I have that I love, but I can definitely see myself using this, even though it is in this little teeny tiny itty bitty baby, oh so small little pan. <laughs> I think maybe the color will overcome my disinclination to use it because it's so tiny. I'm gonna be honest, my brows, I feel like I'm struggling today. I have been wanting to try and really decide how I feel about this product. This is the Brow Blade from Urban Decay. It has two ends to it, there's no spoolie involved. One side is the smallest of small little teeny tiny baby pencils. The other side is, and this is the reason that I bought it, this little teeny tiny, very fine tipped brush applicator that, that puts on like, can you even see it? The smallest, finest, and of course, the more you press, the more you get. The problem that I have with this is I feel like the brush end of this is so much more red than this is the pencil side, this is the brush side. And do you see that huge difference? I know having two shades is what you want, but I feel like once it gets in my brows and I'm using the pencil mostly all over and then this little tiny brush tip like where I feel like I have a gap, like maybe a couple of hairs just don't grow there anymore or they're not as dark as everything else. So I kind of use that to fill in those gaps and it's there that I see this huge, distinctly different shade range. Maybe I'm not using it the way that it was intended to be used but I know that if I take this little tiny brush applicator and try and do my whole brows, they get too warm. They're way too red. And I feel like together, it's, and this, this pen, by the way, this is the Brunette Betty. This is the Brunette shade. I just don't feel like it gives me my best brows. I love the pencil on here. I love the idea of the ink, just not the shade of the ink. So I think I'm gonna have to return this. So these sponges from Flower Beauty, I really like this one. This is the one that I was using under the eyes here. It goes really like perfectly, like right in the corner of my nose without me having to like pull to the side or <laughs> do a funny face. Just kind of goes right in there. And it would be great for me to make sure that I don't get any excess product stuck right there in that little tiny crook in the corner. Or if I wanted to press powder in there to help set it to make sure I don't end up, you know, with problems there. I feel like this one is really great. It works well under the eyes, both this way and with the slanted wedgie tip this way. 
This one, I like how large this bottom is and it's really great for just pouncing product in. I did feel like you could probably do your whole face. There is a slight angle to this here and it does work under the eye, but I really like this guy. I do feel like they're they're both soft, they're, but they do have a bit of resistance to them. They're not so firm um, that you feel like when you're putting it on like you're punching yourself in the face, it doesn't feel like that. But it's definitely a very different texture than the Real Technique sponge and from the a traditional Beauty Blender. I still feel, feel like the Beauty Blender is my favorite, but I'm looking for a less expensive option. And I thought that this was picking up a lot of excess product on my face and maybe not quite giving me the coverage that I wanted. And so I wanna try it again and see whether it was the product that I was using, that it Cosmetics Bye Bye Redness, or whether it was the actual tool itself. Thank you so much for watching today. Subscribe if you aren't already and let me know, do you often kind of dig through your collection and say, oh, I don't remember what I thought about you or you used to be my favorite. Are you still going to stand up to what I'm getting, you know, performance wise out of a completely different product? Let me know in the comments down below. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.